Hey everybody. Many of you have commented on this quilt behind me, which is my gemstone quilt, and you've indicated that you might like to make it. So today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make this gemstone quilt. It's going to be super fun. It's very easy. And I think the result is gorgeous and beautiful. So let's get started. So the charm pack I used for the gemstone quilt is this fossil fern charm pack. It's actually a hundred pieces and every piece is a different color. And I always have one of these in my sewing studio. If I use a fossil fern charm pack, a hundred pieces, I always order another one right away because I always want to have this. These are the best charm packs and I don't think they're that expensive. I think the first one I got at a quilt show, but since then I've been ordering them on Amazon and honestly, they're not that expensive, but I really like it because like I said, every every single one is a different color and there are a hundred of them in here and they're actually organized kind of by colorway. So they, they kind of go in order very nicely. Uh, that's what I used for the gemstone quilt on my wall. However, today I am going to be using a different charm pack. I'm going to be using this watercolor texture charm pack uh, by Wilmington, five carat gems. And it's got a bunch of different colors in here. It's kind of uh, wavy. Let's cut it apart and see what it looks like. So there are a lot of beautiful, beautiful different colors in here. And again, they are kind of organized by uh, color and it kind of has a nice rainbow effect. So the first thing we're going to do with this is we are going to use two charm packs and we are going to cut them all in half. So I am just going to get started. I can cut a few at a time and then I'm going to, once I cut them in half, I'm going to put half of them in one bag and the other half of them in another bag because of the way this quilt works, we're going to be working with two different sets of, of charm, half charm packs. So I'm just going to pull a couple out here and cut them in half. And so you want to measure your charm square first, especially if it has a pinked edge. I know that for this charm pack, the pink the five inches measures on the inside of the pink at pinked edge, if that makes sense. So I am just going to cut all of these in half and put them in two separate piles. And I'm just going to do that to my whole charm pack. They're not in any particular order. Uh, once I get a hold of them, because I'm going to put this together randomly. Now, if you um, don't like randomly, that's fine too. You can do your matchy matchy. And, but I think it's just gives a amazing effect when it is all random. And that's kind of the point of this. It just looks like different color gemstones. And so I'm going to cut through this whole charm pack and I will continue after that. So I've got all of my charm packs cut in half. I put half in one bag and half in another bag. And now I grabbed two, one set, one pair from each bag. And so we're gonna sew these a little differently. So let me show you how I'm going to sew them together. I'm going to turn them over so it's right sides facing on both of them. And basically we're gonna make half square rectangles. And um, that's something that uh, is a little different for people, but we're gonna try it and see how awesome it looks. So we have them on top of each other like this. So all we're gonna do is we're going to take this one and turn it this way so that opposite corners are matching like that. And then we're gonna, for this side, we're gonna do the same thing, except we're gonna go the opposite way so that these corners are lined up. So hopefully that makes sense to you. And just like a half square triangle, then we are going to draw a line 
from corner to corner like this. And I'm just going to use a pencil. If it's a darker fabric on top, you can use a, a chalk pencil or something like that. So I'm just gonna draw a line there. And then on this one, I'm going the opposite direction and I'm going to draw a line from this corner to this corner. There we go, you may or may not be able to see that line. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sew down both sides of this line. So let me go sew that together and I'll show you exactly what it looks like. So as you can see, I have sewn these together um, on both sides of that line and it looks super wonky. It looks like it shouldn't be this way but I'm just going to treat this just like a half square triangle. So I'm gonna take my ruler and just cut right along that line. Made my thread a little short on the loop there. And I'm just gonna cut right down that line. And and again on this one. So then what we end up with is a half square rectangle. So I am going to finger press that and it looks pretty wonky, but I'm going to cut off my dog ears after I iron it. So as you cut them apart, you will see that these two are identical. And then we will, it doesn't really matter which side that you press it on. I tend to just press it to the dark side, but it's completely up to you whatever is more comfortable for you so as you can see these two are identical and these two are identical The the diagonal is going in opposite ways and so let me get these ironed up and then uh we'll look at it then so to square these up you'll be at about two inches in width and so i'm just going to take my ruler on the two inch line you can either square it up this way and i'm really only worried about the width so I'm going to uh, cut off these dog ears on the top and the bottom, and then I'm gonna turn it over and cut off this dog ear. I'm gonna look at my two inch width here. They seem small, but they're okay. Cut off a few pink edges there. And so that is that piece. And then the other way that you can do it is you can just Use a scissors to cut off your dog ears. Whatever is um, whatever is your method, that's fine. We're not really worried if they match up perfectly. We're just going to, um, they just wanna be two inches in width. And um, if you sew a straight quarter inch seam, uh, that shouldn't be a problem. And one more. There we go, get rid of my little baby scraps here. Okay, so I've got two that are opposites like that. I'm gonna put these in one pile and these in another pile because they are going to two separate bags. That's why we separated them. All of these, the diagonal's going one way and on these, the diagonal's going the other way. Now there's a couple different ways that you can do it and you wanna do whatever's easiest for you. So for me, I'm going to sew all of these directional ones first and then I will be done with that bag and then I'm gonna sew all these in the opposite direction. So once you get them all sewn up, you'll have a bag full of the ones going this way and a bag full of the ones going this way. Hopefully that makes sense and let's get sewing. So all of the pieces I've made that the, the slant or the seam goes one way has gone in one bag. All of the pieces that have the slant going in the opposite direction I have in another bag. So I've got all of them done. I was easily able to chain piece them all together. So the next step is to take two from each bag and I'm just going to choose them at random. 
And there's two from that bag, and there is two from this bag. And I'm not really going to worry about the colors unless they're identical, because I don't want them to be identical. And so I'm going to lay them out so that they form a diamond. And so I've got two going this way, and I've got two going this way. So there is my diamond. And if you are unhappy with maybe the colors are too close, you can always switch them around like this. And maybe I want the yellow one in the middle like that instead. And um, maybe I want this one to go here and this one to go here. And you can really just arrange it however you like. And so the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to sew them together like a four patch. So I'm going to take the top two and fold it over and I'm going to sew right down this line here. And let's get that sewn together. I'm not too worried about the matchy matchy of the, of the seams and the, um, I'm just gonna sew them together. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna leave that on the machine and I'm going to take the bottom two, fold them over, line them up on the side like this, and sew those two together. And then I am going to open the top one up and have the seam allowance go to the right the bottom one, I'm going to have the seam allowance go to the left. And then when I put these two together, the only seam I have to worry about matching is this center seam here. And they should just hook together really nicely. And that's the only seam I have to worry about matching up. And I'm gonna sew those two together. And then when I open that back up, I'm gonna finger press that seam. And so I've got a nice little diamond there and the colors are random. And I'm gonna iron that up and add that to my design wall. And basically that's all you have to do is just pick two from each bag, sew them together like a four patch so it creates this diamond. And let's get these up on our design wall and see what they look like. So here we have all of our little four square patch diamonds up on our design wall. There are um, eight across and five down. So that gives us 40, which means that we used 80 charm squares, which worked out perfectly for our two charm packs. And uh, I do have, um, I think I have four left over because there was 42 in each charm pack. So that worked out quite well. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to put sashing in between these. And you don't have to, but I'm going to, and that's how the original quilt was made. And for the sashing, I'm just going to use a jelly roll. And so that seems to work out great for me. I don't have to really measure anything or cut strips or anything like that. So. Um, the way that I like to put sashing on is a little different than most. I am going to show you how I do it. If you look at this, the way it's laid out, I have, I've left some space in between for the sashing. And I know that I'm also going to put a, a border around the entire thing of the same jelly roll strip. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I hope I can explain this well. I'm gonna take all of these pieces, except the last one in my row, and I'm going to attach a jelly roll strip to the side of it. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to take my jelly roll strip or a couple jelly roll strips and take that first row 
except for this last piece over to my sewing machine. So let me show you what I mean. So here I'm at my machine. I've got my jelly roll strip ready to go. And I'm just going to take the very first one and I'm just going to lay that right on my jelly roll strip so that the sides match up. And I'm leaving a little space at the top for the selvage. And I'm just going to sew right down the side and on that jelly roll strip. Making sure it stays lined up. I'm gonna leave a little space and I'm just going to start with the next one. And I'm just gonna keep sewing right down so that the jelly roll strip will end up on one side of all of these blocks. And I'm just gonna keep going down the line until I have run out of jelly roll strip and then I'm gonna start a new one. So as you can see, I've got these sewn on to my jelly roll strip. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and line it up nice and even. And I'm just going to cut that so that it's nice and even with the bottom. Like so. And I'm just going to go on the line and slice it so it's nice and even. And then when I open it up and press it, I like to press it towards the border. There I've got my sashing exactly where it's supposed to be right on the side of that. And I can add that back up to my design wall. So I'm just going to continue cutting these right along. I'm just making sure I'm nice and square and it always works out pretty nicely that way and it's just easy you don't have to um, worry so much about cutting a million pieces to size so that you get the the effect that you want and so i'm just going to continue along until i have all of the pieces with a jelly roll on them except for that very last row that's still up on my design wall. So here, what I've done is I have sewn a strip on to the right side of all of my blocks. So every block now looks like this. It's kind of um, the block with a black strip on the side, except for these end ones, they are still plain. So, now what we're going to do is we're just going to sew all of our rows together and that will leave it so that there is a strip between each block and then we'll take a, a jelly roll strip and we'll put it right to make the horizontal sashings if that makes sense so let me get all these rows sewn together this is also the time where if you want to rearrange your colors a little bit uh, now is a good time to do that so you can rearrange them to your own liking. I've kind of already done that, so I'm going to sew my rows together. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I have added my jelly roll strip in between each block, except for the outsides. And I've also added a jelly roll strip at the bottom of each row except for the bot the very bottom row because that's going to be part of the outer border so the next thing i need to do is i need to sew these rows together but i also want to make sure that these lines line up and so i'm going to show you the easy way to figure out how to make sure those lines line up so let's get started with that so here's my first two rows the bottom of the first row and then the next row down is is here so i'm just going to flip this over and i can tell where this the back side 
of this row is and I am just going to make sure that that is lined up with the row ahead of it and it will line up very nicely and I can just I can tell see there and then I'm just going to stick a pin right in there because I know that that row is lined up and I'm just going to do that with all of them and it's actually quite easy I can just look and see and it's it's really almost not even an issue so I can just generally look at each row see if there's I can just bend back that a little bit see that that lines up stick a little pin in there and then just go to town and that's all there is to it so then when I fold this back I can see that my lines are lined up very nicely and so I can just go to the sewing machine and be confident when I sew those together and so there you have it. The borders are on, all of the sashing is put in, and it turned out beautiful as I expected. I love the randomness of the colors. It kind of looks like stained glass. And so I love the, the gemstone colors. So that's why this is called the gemstone quilt. Uh, it measures 42 wide by 55 long and it's just it looks awesome up on a wall and so this is the second one i've made uh, using again two different uh, charm packs and they both are equally stunning and so i'm super happy with it uh the the one the first one i made i quilted with um the variegated thread and also around the binding i used a a pattern uh, like a stitch pattern, like a fancy zigzag, I guess, around the, the binding. And so that kind of really also brought out that variegated thread. I'm not sure how I'm gonna quilt this one yet, but uh, however I do it, it's just gonna be awesome. So that's the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. And again, thank you for the patience that you've had with me. It's been a minute since my last tutorial. I got to spend two weeks in Minnesota, I taught my mom how to make a kaleidoscope quilt. And so I'm going to show you her quilt, how it turned out right here. And then when I got home, two days after I got home, I came down with the dreaded COVID. So um, it took me a good eight days at least until I kind of felt like myself again. So I appreciate your patience and hopefully I never have to worry about that again. So Again, thank you so much. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you all again. This is Suze from Revelations Quilts. Have a lovely day.